A sense of history being made was in the air on June 28, 1908, at the new Lowe's Poli Theater in downtown Bridgeport. St. Vincent's Training School for Nurses was holding its first commencement ceremony. At the Lowe's Poli Theater tonight will be held the presentation of diplomas to the members of the first class of nurses graduating from St. Vincent's Training School for Nurses. Bridgeport Standard, June 28, 1908. The next day, the first graduates took a class trip by auto to Wallingford and later enjoyed a shoreline dinner at Savin Rock, an amusement park in West Haven. Before the day was out, the alumni was formed and a tradition of caring began. From the very beginning, St. Vincent's has been a tale of generations. My grandmother was a nurse and her first cousin, who was uh, Thomas O'Brien, graduated from the first graduating class of St. Vincent's and went on to become a physician. Um, he set up practice in the Hartford area and unfortunately died in the flood of 1936. From what my grandmother had said, you know, he died um, helping other people. My mother graduated in 1942 and went on to become a Navy nurse. Um, then 30 years later, in 1972, I also went to St. Vincent's School of Nursing and graduated and now am a nurse case manager here at St. Vincent's. The community owes much to that first graduating class of nine women and two men who began their studies in 1905. Their essential commitment has been reenacted for more than 100 years now, learning and caring for the sick and poor, bringing healing and hope to those who are suffering. The first organized training schools for nurses in the U.S. were established in the 1870s. The heroic work of Florence Nightingale on the battlefields of Crimea and the services of the Daughters of Charity on the American Civil War battlefields elevated the role of nursing. By the turn of the century, much needed schools were opening in industrial cities like Bridgeport, crowded with factories and by the waves of immigrants looking for work. Nurses organized the new hospitals and by improving hygiene and public health practices, cut the death rate for their patients. The early instruments have been replaced by computers and technological advances, but the compassion and the unique Catholic health care mission remain the same. I really felt that I was doing something for humanity by going into the nursing profession. I always have liked helping people. Um, when I was in high school, I, I would teach catechism. I volunteered at Yale when I was a student. Part of the volunteering is a reason that I want to be a nurse because it helps me realize that I want to serve others. During the early history of the school, student nurses lived in the hospital. In 1915, a separate nursing residence was completed. By today's standards, student nurses worked unimaginably long and demanding hours. All we did was work like dogs, okay? I mean, if you were up all night on a shift, like say 11 to 7, if you had a class, the doctor could get the class at 7 o'clock, you went from the shift to the class at 7 o'clock, so we're talking about being up almost 24 hours. The 1920s brought advances in the curriculum and new learning opportunities for student nurses. Emerging fields such as communicable diseases, x-ray technology, and anesthesia offered new areas of study. The Great Depression of the 1930s slowed plans for growth, and the war years of the 40s interrupted the lives of many young men and women, but the college continued to grow. With new hospital wings opening in 1938 and again in the summer of 42, there was an immediate need for more nurses and an expanded residence. During the war years, St. Vincent students took part in the United States Cadet Nurse Program. By the time the worldwide conflict was over, 60 St. Vincent's graduates served with the U.S. Army and Navy nurses. With few doctors and staff not overseas, many of the young women back home ran the hospital. We came over to our director and told her we'd like to spend the last six months in the service and she told us that they needed us desperately here, so we will not be going into the service. 
In the 1940s, the college also added a spacious new auditorium with a seating capacity for 500 people. The much-used auditorium became a part of the pageantry of college life hosting generations of social and educational events and nursing ceremonies fondly remembered by many alumni. In the post-war years of the 1950s, when life returned to normal, St. Vincent's formed the first of its associations with local colleges. Professors from the newly formed Fairfield University began teaching social, physical, and biological sciences in the school. Tuition in 1954 took a jump to $206 a year, and in 1955, St. Vincent's was listed among the leading schools of nursing in the country, with an average enrollment of over 200 students. In the 1960s, the School of Nursing continued to evolve toward a college when it began an association with Sacred Heart University. By 1967, St. Vincent's students received 12 college credits as part of the trend toward an academically-based curriculum. Larger social forces at work in the 1960s would soon have a profound impact on the school. Students began turning to four-year institutions to get degrees, and women now had many new career options in society. It was the advent of the feminist movement, and part of that movement was you can be whatever you want to be, that you have potential, it's up to you to use it. And at that point, doors began to open for women, because I think women were starting to break down those doors. They were pounding on those doors to be let in. And so that women were, for the first time, being allowed into the portals of science, math, areas that had pretty much been closed to women or areas that women thought had been closed to them. A new era in medicine and historic changes at the college occurred in 1976 when the modern hospital was opened. Built behind the historic red brick building, the 10-level structure would eventually incorporate the college's auditorium and grounds into the new space. In 1977, St. Vincent's hired a young new director, Anne T. Avalon, to succeed Anelia Kerbelis, who was the first laywoman to lead the school. For the next 25 years, President Avalon would lead the school through uncertain times and the historic transition to a college. The decade of the 80s was a time of planning and major strategic moves that set the stage for future growth. Financial aid for students was expanded, a new curriculum was introduced, and the student body grew more diverse. In 1984, St. Vincent's launched its innovative 23-month nursing program. The following year, it commissioned a feasibility study to move toward issuing associate degrees in allied health. In 1991, the School of Nursing was officially incorporated as St. Vincent's College, ushering in a new era at St. Vincent's. That same year, the first associate degree class was admitted and the college was well on the way to expanding its offerings. In 1995, the college added its first new major with its radiography degree program and also launched a new certificate program leading to other healthcare careers. In 1997, the college building underwent a total renovation, leading to more classroom space, additional student amenities, and new computer labs. The pace of change continued in 1998, when the college added a degree in healthcare management and established an office of continuing education. The innovative cardiovascular technology program was added in 1999, the only one of its kind in New England to meet a critical shortage in the field. In the same year, the college added new certificate programs and a fast track to healthcare careers. With the continuing innovation, the college began to attract students of all ages, including many interested in healthcare as a second career. That I spent 23 years in uh, corporate America in the finance department doing credit and collection activities for various companies. After about 23, 24 years, uh, I realized at that time I could spend the next 25 years there and retire comfortably or I could you know, make a change in my life and uh, try to make a difference in somebody else's life. St. Vincent's College entered the 21st century with a new name, a new facility, and a new outlook on the future. The college needs to expand to offer other programs uh, in the allied health field, uh, simply because there's a need, there's a greater need than, than we're presently serving, I think. St. Vincent's College is very important to 
the future of healthcare in this community, whether it's at St. Vincent's Medical Center or other area uh, healthcare facilities. After years of uncertainty, many social and market forces reaffirmed the value of two-year colleges, and St. Vincent's enjoyed a significant increase in enrollment to over 400 students. Men began returning to nursing or pursuing other majors. In 2005, the college officially installed its second president, John K. Fisher, in ceremonies that gathered educational leaders and dignitaries from across the state. Dr. Fisher, a noted educator with extensive experience in higher education, is looking toward a bright future. We're bringing people back. We're bringing people in who have had a long history with the college, who have contributed uh, to the college and to its growth. So there's, there's kind of an excitement there. As the college celebrates its centennial, it plays a more important role than ever in the education of local healthcare professionals. Today, technologists, radiographers, medical assistants, and others join the ranks of over 3,000 alumni and are eagerly awaited by area employers. After 100 years, the story of generations continues. I now have a daughter that works here. She's a manager up in psychiatry, and then I have a granddaughter that's taken up nursing. She started this year in September. So we keep it in the family. It's a team effort. No, no one person can do all of this. Nobody can do this all by themselves. So we need the help of a lot of people, current students, benefactors, alumni, board members. We need to get them together, working together, to help us fulfill this vision. And uh, there are a lot of people, or a lot of women, or men, that would like to be nurses but can't afford it. I just enjoy doing it. It's, it's wonderful to me. Uh, one of the reasons why I love having students in the medical center is it really raises the bar for all of us as healthcare workers because um, the student is inquisitive, is um, challenging you on why you do things, and it makes us as, as healthcare workers really um, strive to be better in what we do. A vision that has been nurtured for over 100 years is still at work. St. Vincent's College, a world of opportunity close to home.